Invest 95L is right on the verge of becoming our next name Storm. Tropical Storm Lee, NHC continues to increase the favorability of him developing over the next 48 to 72 hours and over the next seven days with a 90% probability this is going to take place. Guys, today on Weather Central, we're not only going to look closely at Invest 95L to see what new trends have come out in our model data and what the future forecasts look like, but I'm also going to give you a generalized big picture of just how busy September could possibly be. It looks like the African fireworks show in terms of our tropical weather may only be beginning to reset, cool down, and then fire back off as we get into the peak of hurricane season. Alrighty viewers, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for episode 19 of Weather Center Nazario. We're starting off on the National Hurricane Center homepage and you can see this chart is beginning to look a little crowded again. We have Gert still working her way off to the north northeast at 15 miles per hour. Katya is expected to dissipate over the next 24 to 36 hours. She is also moving northwest at about 7 miles per hour and we have a newly identified disturbance here with a 30% chance of development over the next 7 days. For the last few episodes of Weather Center we've been fixating on Invest 95L and as you can see the Hurricane Center has continued to ramp up the formation probabilities. We have a 50% chance that by Tuesday we could see a tropical depression if not a low grade tropical storm and over the next seven days we are at a top and out of 90% favorability that formation will be seen as we go throughout the week. So it goes without saying Lee is definitely right there. We're on the cusp of seeing his development take shape. The forecasters in National Hurricane Center continue to expect a west-northwest track over the next seven days, potentially affecting our Lesser Antilles as a high-end tropical storm, or God forbid he develops into a low-grade hurricane before making his arrival. Now, we're actually looking at the full disk infrared shot here of the African continent. The main reason being is I want to highlight just how busy we could possibly get over the next few weeks, especially after September 10th, which is the identifiable peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. So here is 95L over open water, the eastern main development region, just off to the southwest of our Cabo Verde Islands. Not fully organized as of yet, but we've seen some pretty good increases in thunderstorm activity. It looks like the shear that we talked about during episode 18 yesterday is finally starting to weaken because you can see even from this far away of a shot that the thunderstorm activity is not only increasing, but wrapping around his center of circulation. Just upstream on the west coastline, I will say, of Africa right now is our next disturbance with the 30% chance highlighted by National Hurricane Center. It is a very broad tropical wave with a little bit of cyclonic curvature with it already over mainland Africa, and it is likely to take on tropical characteristics pretty quickly once it gets into the main development region over those hot boiling waters. Further upstream, I want to point out very quickly that there are several other vortices thanks to African thunderstorm activity that are likely going to push westward into our MDR that could really intensify just how many cyclones we have in the Atlantic Basin altogether. We have a really good amount of thunderstorm activity here just upstream. There's another portion beginning to take shape, and then back behind that at the very tail end of this loop, if you look, we have another area of thunderstorm activity beginning to form. I point these out even though they're on the far eastern portion of Africa, almost into the Middle Eastern area. This is the Saudi Arabian boot right here, just for folks who can't see it. We are really zoomed out, but I wanted to give you that kind of a highlighting outline so you get a big picture of what sort of perspective we're at. We have four possible waves preparing to come off the African coast into our eastern Atlantic waters where they will continue to form up. A lot of our long-range models are indicating development, and it doesn't look like we're going to have environmental conditions that will help suppress any tropical development over the next three to four weeks. Even as we go into October, the first to second week of October looks like we could have some pretty good activity out there over the tropical basin. So today's episode, I want to emphasize that more than anything. We're going to mainly focus on the fact that September altogether is likely to be busy and we're going to have our hands full pumping out content, getting information out to you guys, and just keeping track of what's going on in the tropical Atlantic. We came into this season with the idea that because of El Nino and because of the wind shear conditions we observed through June and July, that the 2023 season could possibly be a bust. And it looks like the updated forecasts that have leaned further and further towards a very heavily populated tropical season are starting to pan out. We are on Lee. It looks like Margot is right on the horizon, right behind Lee once he gets his act together. Katya was a kind of a name etched off the list, very quickly losing its tropical characteristics to getting sheared apart. Maybe little bits of organization in terms of thunderstorm activity, but you can tell that she's essentially on an IV drip at this point. She's holding on to life support for dear life 
safe, no pun intended. So over time, we're really gonna have to watch this general source region because it looks like we're going to have two, if not even three, maybe even four new disturbances to take a look at over the next three to four weeks that could possibly cause some chaos across the North Atlantic. We're currently taking a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly chart analyzed just earlier today, guys, and there's two interesting anomalies that I want to show y'all. If you look over the Western Caribbean, you can actually see an area of average temperatures. There really isn't any anomalous activity going on in the Western Caribbean, and that is a result of Idalia mooching off of those hot ocean temperatures and beginning to form up before making her way towards the Panhandle Big Bend area of Florida. You can actually see in the anomaly chart how the waters are tapped of energy supply because of the hurricane activity we've had in both places. Take a look at this general area of cooler temperatures over the eastern Atlantic and closer to Bermuda. That is because of Franklin and even the remnants of Idalia having made it off the Carolina coast and kind of sort of fed on that same source of energy that Franklin used to really up his intensity to a major category for a hurricane before cycling out into the North Atlantic becoming nothing more than a remnant system. So this is pretty interesting. I wanted to pull that up, but I also wanted us to fixate at how above average we are in the East Atlantic. We have temperatures well above two to three degrees Celsius in this area, so we could see further development of any type of system that comes out off of West Africa and pushes west through this source region. This is a quick glance at sea surface temperature in actuality. You can still make out the cooler temperatures, relatively cooler temperatures, I'll caveat that, relatively cooler temperatures in the Western Caribbean and this pocket of cooler temps headed off to the north along the Eastern Atlantic because of our previous tropical activity that we're helping to essentially zap the ocean of its heat content. So we have a decent area of unfavorable surface environment at least for whatever future cyclones may work their way through there. Long range models predict that Lee, once he does get his act together, could track off in this general direction, and as he moves forward in time, he could actually interact with the areas tapped of any kind of fuel supply for these circulation centers and run into an area of weakness almost to where he has no choice but to dissipate because he can't fuel on the, the surface temperatures of the water just below his vortex. Overall, though, it looks like the Atlantic is in pretty good shape in terms of developing future tropical cyclones. We have very, very hot waters all in this general region. I'm not even going to try to mention geographic locations because you could essentially paint a picture of the entire Atlantic, the entire Caribbean, and let's not forget near the Bahamas and the Gulf of Mexico, such hot waters. So you can say that the ingredients are in place at least in the lowest point in the environment for developing systems as we go through time. We're looking at the latest Saharan dust chart for the Atlantic Basin, and as you can see, we still have some very weak plumes coming off of the African continent spilling into the Atlantic, but as they move further and further off to the west, they are dissipating pretty rapidly, especially as you get closer to the lesser end. Antilles, the Caribbean Sea, and the Central Atlantic, thanks to this residual tropical moisture induced by the remnants of Idalia and Gert, who is trying her best. She's trying her best. Same with Katia. Katia is inundated by all this dust, especially along its southern flank, and that's also what's essentially asphyxiating the life out of its center. I wanted to make our way over to the mid-level water vapor shop because even though it looks like the dust is no longer an issue, we do still have pretty copious amounts of dry air just out ahead of our Invest 95L. This is future Lee. Lee is definitely going to organize over the next 48 to 72 hours, possibly sooner than that if the environment remains conducive and he continues off to the west, avoiding any kind of potential wind shear that we saw affecting him yesterday. But as he moves further downstream down the way, this dry air could possibly act as a cap for further development. So it's going to it remains to be seen exactly how intense this system is going to get. Latest operational models want to develop this into a pretty solid hurricane, if not a major hurricane, as we go down the road. However, I think that these conditions just ahead of him are going to play a role in just how in much intensification we see of Lee once he gets his act together. In wake of Lee, that next disturbance is actually going to have wonderful conditions to tap into. We have the hot water, the dust is not an issue, and this dry air is going to be infecting the center of Lee as he propagates off to the west. So our next disturbance should have a breeze in terms of trying to develop and get a circulation going, albeit it is expected to kick out into the central Atlantic, posing no sensible threat to any major land masses outside of producing some pretty good amounts of rain for the Cabo Verde Islands. Okay, so as we transition to Windy, I want to go ahead and give the heads 
things up once again. As you can see, we haven't dabbled into any model data just yet. Today's Sunday. It's the start of a new week, so I wanted to spend particular time just discussing what it is that we have going on out there in the tropical Atlantic, what's happening over CONUS that could influence future tracks of storms headed in our direction, as well as what's to come off of Africa as we get further and further through the peak of hurricane season. Here's our Invest 95L. This is Lee trying to better organize. We are 100 meters off ground level or 330 feet as indicated off to the left hand side of the screen. You guys can't see it. I have the image cropped ever so slightly, but we are literally just above ground level. And if you turn your attention off of the northeastern coast of the United States, look at what Idalia has transformed into. It is still baroclinic in nature. It has jet support. This is not a reorganized tropical system. And I can tell you right away, just looking at the wind overlay here, you can detect surface frontal features associated with this feature. There's a surface front down and just through this area here. I can draw it with the streamlines and you can see the kinking in the wind flow, uh, the troughing just to the south of its center of circulation. And up into this area off to the east, that is a textbook warm front or warm sector feeding into the warm air that's moving to the north associated with our high pressure parked essentially over the central Atlantic just to the north of where Lee is expected to track as he further organizes. Just up to the corner here, this is also post-tropical remnants of Franklin, also with jet support. You can see it's actually trying to occlude. And what occlusion means in synoptic meteorology is it's pulling away from its jet support. I'll take you through a quick crash course on baroclinic features. This one would be considered a mature wave at this point because if I were to extrapolate where the jet likely is located, it would be just to the south and east of its center, which means that our low is beginning to pull poleward or towards the Arctic, towards the North Pole, if you will. And so the jet's running over the triple point of our low. So we have frontal activity down in through here, indicated by the winds once again, our our warm sectors off the chart and right here would be our purple occluded front indicating that this thing is definitely going barotropic at this point which means the temperature discontinuity around it is becoming more uniform it gets colder and colder as you get towards the center as opposed to the traditional ribbons we see on surface charts when looking at the vertical stack of cold fronts warm fronts etc katia here according to the wind flow around this storm is very north loaded because of the shear that she's experiencing from the south ripping any thunderstorm activity apart and you can see that most of the activity is transitioning off to the north. Uh, in general, for the Atlantic region altogether, we're starting to see a bit of a reload phase. We had a brief instance of quite a bit of fireworks going off over the last two-ish or so weeks. We're in a cool-down phase. Invest 95L is only the first of many to come off of Africa, so let's take this time to get a better understanding of what he's going to do and what future cyclones could possibly do. Just looking at this surface chart to its entirety, we have high pressure over the southeast quadrant of the United States. States. Still a response to the frontal boundary that helped protect Central Florida from Idalia as she made her way into the panhandle of Florida. We also have a high pressure situated, as I mentioned previously, over the Central Atlantic that's going to drive 95L off to the west. If this system remains in place, if that high can continue to spin without losing too much of its intensity, what's going to happen is it's going to drive Lee off further to the west. But it's going to be a careful wait and see game as the frontal system associated with Idalia digs in along its northeastern quadrant. We could see a little bit of weakening go on as we go through time. Very quickly, folks, we haven't seen too much in the way of significant changes with our models, so I'm going to go quickly through these bad boys. This is the American model. Once it pulls up, you can see 95L down here labeled 1011 millibar depression potentially at this point. This is Tuesday at 18 Zulu. I do anticipate we'll have a depression form by then, if not a tropical storm. And you see the GFS wants to actually pull it just barely, just a hair to the north of our Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and actually keep it far enough away from the Bahama Islands to not pose a significant threat. And the latest iteration of the 12Z run does have it coming very dangerously close to the Cape Hatteras, North Carolina area and given a nice graze or two to the northeastern states before really ejecting out with our next frontal system. So eastern Canada, Nova Scotia, just the eastern periphery of Canada to its entirely could actually do battle with Lee, at least according to the latest iteration of our American model GFS. Moving on to the CMC, the CMC has been doing fairly decent in terms of run-to-run -run consistency and did very well with our previously named storm, so I want to look a little bit further ahead in time with this, not pay too much attention to what Lee's going to do. It does seem like we could have a hurricane affecting our Antilles in Puerto Rico, and this has been trending on the CMC for the last couple of days now, so it goes without saying we are keeping a close eye on where it goes. What I want us to more so fixate on is as we get to the tail end of this run... 
As I mentioned and what the theme is for episode 19, as Lee approaches the southeastern coastline and could possibly play an influence in our weather, maybe not. It's really going to depend on a lot of the synoptic action we have going on over the United States. I also want you to look at the one... The two, the three extra features that we have coming off of Africa and populating westward through our main development region. One of which does seem to taper off, and I believe this is our current disturbance number three highlighted for that 30% chance of development. But then we have something that looks fairly impressive on things like our relative humidity and our precipitable water products with the Canadian model. And then we have a cyclone just upstream of that. So it's going to be shoulder to shoulder here very soon, especially if these model parameters do pan out over time. This is September 13th, so not too far into the distant future, but still far enough away to get an idea of what is coming off of Africa and what we will have to monitor over the coming weeks. You all could say I saved the best for last. This is the most recent run, the 12Z iteration of the European model. After 72 hours, you can see that the Euro is anticipating two separate cyclones forming up in our main development region, the Eastern Atlantic. One going pretty much right over top the Cabo Verde Islands, and this would be Lee having spun up into a potent tropical storm, if not a low-grade hurricane. The Euro does does want to amplify its intensity pretty quickly. At 96 hours, you can see a pretty concentrated center of circulation with Lee and our future tropical storm Margo impacting the Cabo Verde Islands. And as you go towards the back end of the run, this is 144 hours out, 186 hours out, 216 and 240 what is a little concerning in terms of what lee is anticipated to do we do lose our support for margo margo is anticipated to dissipate just because she's going to get herself into the central atlantic where we do see a bit of a cooling trend in our surface temperature and conditions are just not conducive for further upward vertical motion in her center so she is likely to fall apart suffer the same fate as katya is undergoing as we speak it does seem like lee is going to go stagnant for a little while either over top the caribbean island are just to the north and just quickly glancing at the precipitable water and using what experience I do have from synoptic meteorology I could interpolate from this product that we have some sort of a frontal feature in through this region coming back around in the form of a stationary boundary a little bit of cold air damming over the Appalachians and then another pretty potent frontal feature coming off the coastline the only reason I bring this up is anytime a storm goes stationary, that means it's losing predominant steering flow with it. And what that could mean is it could eject quickly off to the north, affecting Bermuda. It could come very dangerously close to the Carolinas, or it could continue off to the west and become an issue for the Bahamas and southern Florida over the next couple days after this point in the run. This is the 13th of September. We have 10 days before he gets close enough to start making accurate assessments of which direction it's going to go in. The biggest factor that I want to point out that's also evident on the Canadian model is as this really strong 1033 polar high comes off the coast, it is going to create a pretty substantial force field right in front of this storm. So honestly, just looking at this area here, I don't foresee this storm wanting to punch north into that cold air. You know, in terms of physical meteorology, that's not what these systems tend to do. So it goes without saying, we're going to have to be persistent in monitoring how the big picture weather pattern over North America sets up, what it looks like pushing off of the coastline of the United States, and how it influences Lee, depending on if it slows down or continues continues its pretty rapid westward forward progress in the eastern Atlantic. I believe he's moving at a steady pace of 22 to 24 miles per hour as of the most recent NHC update. So that brings us to the end of episode 19, guys, a general overview of what the tropics are looking like, what Lee could possibly do once it finally undergoes sufficient cyclogenesis. For now, this is going to conclude episode 19. Let's get into the closing. And with that, that'll do it on episode 19 of Weather Central Nazario. I feel as if I'm repeating myself at this point, but it goes without saying. I've been looking at the numbers on my YouTube channel, and I want to extend such a huge thank you to all of my latest subscribers. It was just this Friday evening that I announced 1,000 subscribers, and I cannot believe we are on the cusp of 2,000 subscribers. Guys, it's been so enlightening getting to connect and communicate with all of you. I can't thank you enough for the generous support that you've shown my channel, especially throughout Edalia and what September looks to hold in store for us over the coming weeks. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday, as always, and you've had a phenomenal weekend so far. Labor Day is tomorrow. Please take the time to rest, recuperate, and enjoy the time with your family and friends. While the weather is fairly benign, not only in our neck of the woods in the southeastern United States, but across the tropics as well, because things could be changing on the horizon. Guys, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.